We're going to use the data flow diagram notation that's on the screen right now where we have an external entity, data store, data flow, and process. Keep in mind with the context diagram we do not include the data store. We'll see that later on when we do our high level diagram or our level one diagram. This is the scenario that we're going to be using for our context level diagram sometimes referred to as a level zero diagram. We'll also use this same scenario for creating a decomposition diagram and a high level process or level one diagram. The scenario is on the screen. I'll let you read it. If you want it to take a little bit longer to read it, pause the screen or pause the video. If you haven't already done so, you should go to draw.io and link your draw.io account or establish a draw.io account and link it to your Google account so that you can easily save and retrieve your data flow diagrams. So here we're going to go ahead and create a new diagram and we'll just leave it as a blank diagram. And I failed to rename it so I can go back up here and I can rename it right in here and we'll call it XYZ context diagram. At this point you should be on a blank screen for your XYZ context diagram. I don't like having the grid on there mainly being I copy and paste it leaves the grid marks in the background so I usually take that out and you can do that by hitting view and then the grid and all. If you haven't already done so, you should transfer over the items that were in the draw.io diagram that I shared with you in class over into your scratch pad so that you have your process, your data store, and your external agents already created. Remember that draw.io is not designed for data flow diagram and process modeling specifically it's done, designed for drawing several different things one of those is the process modeling and it works well for us besides it's free typically when you do a data flow diagram from your real organization you're going to know exactly what it is that is the scope of your data flow diagram and you'll be able to answer a lot of the questions that you have for how to design the diagram in the case of this example, we only have the scenario that I provided. And in order to do the, the scenario, what we want to do is keep it specific to the scenario. In other words, don't interpret what you think should be on there. Just use what's in the scenario. So let's look at our scenario again. One of the things that I suggest when doing the data flow diagrams from a scenario is to just go line by line through each example and see what it is that you have to create for your diagram. So for the context level diagram, remember that's an overview of the whole process. And we don't include data stores in the data flow diagram for a context level diagram or otherwise known as level zero diagram. And in our scenario here, we have external agents processes and data flows. Again, we don't use the data store. So what are our external agents? We can go through and we can see that we have campus ministers and we have students. Those are our external agents or external entities as they're sometimes called. And our process is called the chapel system. So we can do all of what we need to do with that information. So we're back at our draw.io side. Now let's go ahead and add in our external entities. We have here one external entity and then we can call that one the student. And then we have another one we'll call the campus minister. Now note, I'm just dragging things over from the scratch pad here. And we can zoom in a little bit here so it looks a little bit better when you're print watching it on this video. And then we have a single process. When you're doing the context level diagram, you're going to have a single process. The system is, and in this case, it's called, we're going to put a zero on that because it's a level zero diagram, and we're going to call it the chapel system. If you want, 
you can label it something else as long as it's very clear what's going on and what we're doing. So here we have the other external entity and that's the campus ministers. Going back to our slide, here we have our scenario and let's see what's going on here. So campus ministers use the chapel system to notify students of chapel dates and topics. So we can go back to our diagram and so we know that the campus ministers will send the dates and the topics through the system into the ch to the students back out to the students so you note when I mouse over a element that's on the screen here you'll see light blue triangles show up and you can drag those triangles to create the arrows so we don't need that's why we don't have the in the scratch pad we don't have the arrows because it's really not necessary you can go in but we do have to label everything so in here we're gonna put our dates and topics because that's the data flow. That's the data that's flowing from the campus ministers. And then it's going through the system and notifying the students. Yes, it, it would be acceptable to do two separate arrows or two separate data flows, one for dates and one for topics, but it's in this case acceptable to put them together as well. Let's go back to our scenario and see what happens next. The students attend the chapel. Well, we're doing a data flow diagram, so we don't actually indicate that the students attend chapel because that's a physical flow. What we're looking for is where is the data going? Where are the data going? At the end of the chapel, they present their IDs to be scanned and the results are stored in a file. Okay, that's good information for later, but we don't use a data store in a context level diagram, but we do scan, pay, pay attention to where they're scanning their IDs. So let's go back to our diagram now. So the students, when they're going to chapel services, will get their IDs scanned. So what we do, and this is the tricky part you want when you're using draw.io, you have to make everything as clear as possible. You don't want to have lines overflowing on other lines. So we have the student ID or the student identification going into the chapel system. Going back to our scenario, at the end of the term, the system generates a report of attendance for the ministers and contacts students with fewer than cha 30 chapel credits. Okay, so at the end of the term, the system generates a report and contacts students. So the system, let's say, will make that report go to the campus ministers, and that'll be an attendance report, or we can call it a probation report and it sends a notification also to the students and again it's tricky at times trying to get it all to line up nice and neatly and we'll call this the probation notice note that the arrows are important it, the, they indicate the direction of the data flow so you have to make sure that you're putting in the data uh, the arrow f on the data flow correctly make sure that everything is labeled remember our entities are nouns and our processes in general are going to be a verb noun or noun verb name to them when we're talking about the context level diagram we're talking about the overall system so there's a slight deviation there for the context level diagram. And if you wanted to, you can go down into, oops, not in the miscellaneous, but right here in general, and add text and call this our XYZ. This way, if you print it out, or when you make a PDF of it, you'll have the name on it. And I'm gonna expand that out, move it over here. And then from here, we can go ahead and increase the size as, as well. And there, we're done with the context level diagram. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you.